AI and Machine Learning Lesson 3, Patterns in Data. For your warm-up today, I want you to look at these two questions and answer at least one of them. When browsing the internet, what's the weirdest thing an ad has ever tried to get you to buy? Or, when sending a message, what's the funniest thing that autocomplete has suggested to finish a sentence? So think about that. Pick one of them. You're going to go to your assignment document. And you see two boxes, so make sure that you answer one. You don't have to answer both. You can pause this video, type in your answer, and then be prepared to share. Okay, review your answers and what was shared in the class. Um, these answers show that computers make recommendations for us pretty often, but they aren't always very effective. Today we'll see how we can improve the way a computer makes, a re makes recommendations. We'll ask a computer to recommend what type of shoes we should wear for the day and see several ways a computer might make this decision. And our question for the day that we'll think about throughout this lesson is what strategies do computer models use to make decisions? We're going to have four activities for this lesson. And one thing to keep in mind, this is a word that we're going to use throughout all of the activities, and that is model. Remember that a machine learning model is just a computer program designed to make a decision. In this lesson, we're going to look at several apps and try to understand the model they are using to make decisions. Some of these apps may be making decisions in very clever and sophisticated ways, and others, not so much. You're going to go to Code Studio now. And if you remember, the best way to get to our lesson is not to click on the link, but just go to Code Studio, code.org, log in with your Microsoft account. So click on that blue button that says Log in with Microsoft. That's how most of you created your account in the last quarter. And then you should see on your screen, on your dashboard, it should say AI Unit Pilot. When you click there, all the lessons will show up. And we're going to go to Lesson 3, Level 2 which is called Shoe Recommender. So you can pause the video if you need to while you get into code.org, lesson three, level two. When you're there, um, take a look at the app. You're gonna run the app several times and see if you can get each of the four recommendations. So there's four shoe possibilities with this app. After you've run it several times, Make a prediction. How do you think this model is making its decision? So I'm going to go to code.org. I'm here in lesson three, level two. I'm going to click run and just click on recommend shoes. So this time I got cowboy boots. Slippers. I'm getting those two a lot. Finally got something else. So do this on your own while you pause the video, and then we're going to go to our answer document and answer a few questions. Now you've had a chance to run the program several times. Did you kind of figure out how the app was recommending shoes? You might have noticed that it was kind of just randomly selecting a shoe. So is this program helpful for deciding shoes? We're going to have you answer that question in just a minute, but let's take a look at how the program was laid out. This is the basic description of the app. The intended use is to help you decide what shoes to wear on a given day. And the model is random. This model randomly selects between four different shoe types each time. So now go to your assignment document and answer these three questions. Is it the program helpful? Why or why not? And what would improve this model to help it make better decisions? So one way you may have decided that could improve this model is to ask the user some questions, kind of get a little bit of a background before making a recommendation. So we're gonna to go to the next level. 
Uh, you can click on the next bubble. Right now you're on level two, so you're going to click the next bubble over, go to level three. This is the improved shoe recommender. When you get there, once again, you're going to run the app several times. And this time there are six recommendations. So see if you can get each of the six recommendations. So take your time to do it and then make a prediction. How do you think this model is making its decision? So if you're here in code.org, you're going to just click on the next bubble over. The instructions are here. You're going to click run and recommend shoes. So it's going to ask you a few questions. Is it raining outside? What kind of a day is it? Let's say that it's casual and recommend shoes. Then I can click and make another recommendation. This time I'll say it's rainy and that it's um, outdoors. So I'm going to pause. You should pause the video and run this several times and see what does it take. Can you get all six? Of the different recommendations. So now that you've had time to explore, how do you think this program is making its decisions? Did you think it was more or less helpful for deciding shoes than the last program, which was just random? Here's the description of this particular app. So it's still going to help you decide what shoes to wear on a given day from six different choices. And the model this time is a decision tree. This model uses a series of questions to help you decide your shoes. Based on your answers, a specific type of shoe is chosen for you. So it does use a decision tree. And here's kind of an example of what, how this particular program is mapped out. So it starts with, is it raining outside? And it's got yes with some particular branches and no with some particular branches. You might notice that the only way you can wear sneakers is if it's raining outside. The only way you can wear dress shoes is if it's not raining outside. So it's certainly going to be different than the random, but is it how you might want it to be? You're going to come back to your answer document. You're on the next slide now, level three, and you're going to answer these three questions. How do you think this program is making its decision? Is it more or less helpful than the last one? And what would improve this model to help it make better decisions. Now, as we mentioned, um, this model has you only wearing sneakers when it's raining and sports cleats when it's not raining. So something that might make it better is getting input from our users to help make decisions. Now we're going to go to our next activity, which is also on Code Studio. You're going to click to the next level, level four, and this is a shoe survey data. So it's going to be a little bit different than running an app. We're going to investigate the data that we use with our model. When you get there, you're going to click on this data tab and you're going to create a visualization or a chart about this shoe survey. In order to help you know what to do, I'm going to show another video that's going to go through the different highlights of this particular tool. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm a curriculum writer for code.org and I'm going to show you how to access the data tab and take a look at some survey data related to shoes. So in this level, we've already seen some shoe recommender apps and how they work. And we've now asked 500 people questions about their day, what type of shoe they wore, about the weather, and you. We're going to look for patterns in their answers to help us decide what shoes we would like to recommend to these people. In order to do that, we have to first go into the data tab. So I'm going to press this little data button, and I'm going to open up the shoes table here. This table has several columns. These columns represent the different questions that we asked people. We asked them how they spent their time, what was the weather like, how do they feel about socks, how would you describe your day, um, do you care if people notice your shoes, and then we asked them what shoe they were wearing in that particular day. And so we have lots of answers that we can look at. And rather than look at each row individually, each person that we asked, we can press this visualize data button 
and we can start to notice some trends and patterns in these answers that people gave. I'm going to use a chart called a cross tab, which will let me compare two things. One of the things I want to compare is the question that I asked. For example, how are you going to spend your time today? And the other thing I want to compare is the shoe that they wore. When I do this, I can start to see some relationships between the answers that people gave. Across this column over here are how people answered how they spend their time. If they're going to be in bed, they're going to be in a city, they're going to spend their time indoors or out in nature. Across the top, I can see the answers of what type of shoe they picked. And in the middle, I can see how people answered these two questions together. For example, people who said they were going to spend their time in bed, none of those people said they were going to wear dress shoes. However, people who said they were going to spend their time indoors, a lot of those people, 50 of those people, said they were going to wear dress shoes. If I look over here at work boots, I can see that people who tend to wear work boots are ones who are going to spend their day either in a city or out in nature. When I look at data like this, I can start to identify these hot spots, these places where the data seems to be related to each other, and I can notice some patterns. I can also click up here to pick a different question to look at. For example, what's the weather going to be like? And I can again look at this data to see if there are any patterns that will help me tell what type of shoes I might recommend depending on what the weather's like. For example, if it's snowy outside, it seems like not a lot of people are wearing sandals or tennis shoes, but it does seem like a lot of people are wearing work boots, which might suggest to me that if someone says it's going to be snowy outside, maybe I'll wear work boots. After looking through all of the different questions and identifying these hotspots, when you're all done, the next task would be having a conversation with someone nearby. Do you notice any patterns with the shoes that might be easy to predict based on the data that you see? Any relationships? And are there any shoes that appear more difficult to predict? It's harder to see how these questions can help recommend that type of shoe. So happy looking through data. All right, so that's what we're going to do next. Let's go into our code.org tab. We're going to click on the next bubble. And we can see that there's not a lot going on. It's not going to help us if we run it, but I'm going to click on this data tab right here. And down here in the middle, I see shoe survey. So I'm going to click on that. And we are ready to make our visualization. If you want to, you could scroll through and kind of see all the data. Um, but we're going to click on visualize. And we want to do a cross tab. Now, if you have time and you want to play around with it, you can certainly look at other ones. But for this particular assignment, we need to do a cross tab. And my X value is going to be one of these questions that, that was asked. Let's start with spend time first. And then we're going to always select shoot. And here's our data. We can look for hotspots, like if there's a zero. If somebody is spending time in bed, they are not going to wear a dress shoe or tennis shoe or work boots. And then this. Conversely, if they're indoors, there's a high correlation that they might be wearing tennis shoes. So you can spend some time kind of looking this over, and then you can also change the X value to a different thing. You can look for if they like socks, or what about the day? Okay, so you can change this X value to lots of different things and look for hot spots. I'm going to have you take a screenshot of one of your visualizations and then go back to your assignment document and answer a few questions. So take some time to play around with this and then I'll meet you back at the assignment document.